Namaste. 21st of June is an international yoga day. And the great state of Hawaii has recently passed a resolution on celebrating this day in the state of Hawaii as the International Yoga Day. And the Gandhi Institute of Peace in Honolulu in Hawaii is organizing this special event. And we would like to have Dr. Deepak Chopra to be the key feature of this wonderful event which is happening in the state of Hawaii. So Deepak ji, the theme of this International Yoga Day this time is Yoga for Humanity. And how do we find yoga as the solution for the current modern day world crisis that we have? All the crises in uh, our modern day are actually a result of the conflicted, divided, uh, fearful, anxious, uh, conditioned mind. And that's been the history, unfortunately, of humanity since medieval times. But medieval times, uh, people went into conflict with bows and arrows or cannon, cannons or guns. Today we have modern capacities like nuclear weapons and biological warfare and now uh, internet warfare, which is even more dangerous. You can uh, cause the extinction of humanity by using a computer and uh, cause devastation. In addition, not only do we have these mechanized ways of death, uh, but we have uh, climate change, we have uh, an unsustainable planet, we have poison in our food chain, we have the extinction of species and a total destruction of the ecosystem uh, of which we are a part, the, what we call the environment is really not the environment, it's our extended body. Uh, we, don't, we don't realize that the air is our breath, and that the rivers and waters are our circulation, and the earth is recycling as our body, and uh, even the atoms in the body were made in the crucible of burning stars. So certainly we are sleepwalking to extinction. And all these problems are created by the mind. And you cannot solve these problems at the level at which they are created. And this is why yoga could rescue humanity right now. That's why it's important that yoga for humanity. Because what we call humanity right now is really um, a collective insanity. And if we deny that uh, we are living in an insane world, we are in a way declaring our own insanity. Yoga is the science of, um, of expanded awareness that takes us beyond the conditioned mind into the whole mind, a whole holy mind, sacred mind, uh, collective consciousness and beyond the conditioned collective consciousness universal consciousness. So it is actually the need of our time. That's why yoga for humanity is a perfect phrase. As we look at the eight limbs of yoga, starting with yama and niyama, uh, the first principle in yama is uh, ahimsa. Yama is today being called uh, uh, social intelligence. But it is much more than social intelligence. It takes us to the level of sacred creative intelligence. And, and I think uh, even though when we look at uh, the times of Mahatma Gandhi, he so beautifully intertwined this whole yogic philosophy in living and still leading a revolution where it's non-violence, whether it's simple living, uh, natural medicine, uh, physical, mental purification, cleanliness, inspiring people with these so-called yogic thoughts and was able to overthrow negativity to a certain extent. Yeah, because uh, the revolution he brought about, Mahatma Gandhi, was an inner revolution. He was the perfect example of ahimsa on the collective level and nobody could uh, uh, 
uh, fight that. Uh, ahimsa on that level is invincible, absolutely invincible. And uh, you know, I was saying that uh, today uh, the yamas are being labeled as social intelligence, the niyamas as emotional intelligence, and they're the stepping stones to higher consciousness, awareness of the body, awareness and use of the breath, withdrawal of the senses, pratyahara, but also going beyond to regulation of our internal organs, interoception, dharna, uh, focused awareness and intention, and then dhyan, meditation, and samadhi, transcendence. If we put this all together, and if we have a critical mass of people actually moving in this direction, we can definitely hope for a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier and joyful world. Uh, right now the world is suffering in every level. And the only liberation from the suffering is yoga, as you know, yoga is yuj, union, with our own self. Atman is Brahman and ultimately that's who we are, uh, divine beings with self-awareness. And if we don't uh, unleash our potential for greatness, then our humanity is incomplete. And I think one of the messages that you were speaking so beautifully this morning was, was creating a Sangha and having this yogic community of, of people who are doing asanas, pranayama, meditation together and creating that Sangha and creating an uprising in collective consciousness is also going to slowly shift and change us into the right direction. Absolutely. Then today's Sanghas can be global because they are both online and offline. Uh, this capacity was not um, there for our ancient seers and sages. So, and yet their influence lives to our time. Now that gift of, that we receive from these luminaries can spread uh, throughout the world. Um, and we can have a global Sangha and that's why again Yoga for Humanity is very important and what I was thinking is going back to our traditions where they say not only in moments of crisis but to create uh, harmony in the world we need refuge in the Dharma we need refuge in our consciousness and we need refuge in the Sangha and if we have these three components then we have transformed ourselves. Absolutely, and you have been on a tireless pursuit of doing this. I think your new book is about yoga, living in light. The yoga for self-realization, that's what it is. Yes. That's perfect. So we wish everyone a wonderful International Yoga Day and uh, maybe we take this message forward of leading a healthy, happy, enlightened life. Namaste. Namaste.